And God's going to challenge you based upon your accessibility. In other words, he, he, you know, when we look at our ability, He's already given us the ability to do it. Now He's saying, okay, it's up to you to step out there and just do it. Amen? Amen. And some people are saying, you know what? Somebody else can do it. I'm not going to do it. I'll go to church every once in a while. I'll do this. I'll do that. Hey, God's looking at our availability or our accessibility. Right. Then number three, God's going to reward you based upon your accountability. If you would, look at verse number 25. This was the one with one talent. And I was afraid and went and hid my, thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou had that thy all. Lo, there that thou had that is thine. Notice what Jesus says. The Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I have sown not, and gathered where I have not straw. If you would, look at verse number 30. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, and he shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You remember when I said all three servants were saved? One had five talents, one had two talents, one had one talent. They were all saved. One used his talent. And when he stood before God, stood before Christ, he said, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You're going to be rewarded. The one that used two talents, he didn't have as much as the one as the other guy. But Jesus said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I'm going to make you ruler over many things. The other servant said, I did nothing. I took what you've given me and I hid it in the earth. And Jesus looks at him and says, you wicked, slothful, lazy servant. How would you like to stand before God? You're in heaven. And Him look at you and say, you mean to tell me while you was on earth, you did nothing for my kingdom? I gave you talents. I gave you things that you could do. I gave you abilities and you just refused to use them. You slothful servant. In verse 30, you probably think this means eternal damnation or hell, but it does not. What it means is a loss of privileges, a loss of rewards. You cannot lose your salvation. Where he says, out of darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let me explain something to you. In other scriptures, you'll see wailing and gnashing of teeth. You'll see a furnace of fire. That's speaking about hell. Here, he's speaking about what the kingdom of heaven is going to be like for the saved people and what you need to do while you're here on earth. Amen? Amen. So, it's in what he's saying here, it's entirely up to each individual. Once you're saved, it's entirely up to you and I to use what God has given us so that we don't lose privileges in heaven. You say, well, Brother Mike, as long as I get to heaven, who cares? Who really cares? Suppose I've got a back row seat. Who cares? You will. You will. Go to your boss tomorrow morning and tell him, I don't ever want to raise again. I didn't think you'd do that. Okay? See, what Christ is saying here is we're going to have privileges in heaven. Not everybody's going to be treated equally in heaven. And I think that's where people get confused. And he's saying what you do here on earth, how, what you, what, how you spend your life here, what you do with Christ here on earth is going to determine your privileges in heaven. And when you get to heaven, you're going to have a glorified body. You're going to have a new body. And again, there's not going to be what you see here on earth, the animosity and the, the jealousy and all like that, it's going to be totally different. And there's going to be a desire there to say, Lord, I just want to do so much for you. And I want to do more and more and more. And, and, and Lord, I, I want to praise you more and more and more. And he's going to say, you don't have all these privileges because you didn't work for me while you were there. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, 
You're playing with fire. That's risky business. I mean, you're really, really, really taking a risk. If you're here this morning and you are saved and you're not in service and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing for the kingdom of God, that's risky business. Amen? Amen. What Jesus is trying to say is, just use what I've given you to the best of your ability. Would you bow your heads, please? With every head bowed and every eye closed, as Tina, Debbie, if you would come. We're going to have a song of invitation here. Just a moment. And all I want you to do, first of all, is think about where you stand today. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised the next day. You're not promised 10 years from now. I hope you do that that long. But what happens if you don't? What happens if you die today? You're going to spend eternity in hell. But all that can be stopped. When we start singing this morning, you just come and say, Brother Mike, I want to be saved. Just, just tell me how I can be saved. Maybe you're here this morning and you've been saved. Did you know the very next step is baptism? Baptism doesn't get you to heaven. It doesn't save you. It doesn't guarantee you a spot in heaven. But that's what the Lord did. And He expects us to follow His example. Maybe you need to come and set a time and a, and a, and a date where you can be baptized. Maybe you're here this morning and you've been saved and you've been baptized and you're a member of another church. Maybe God's calling you here to serve. This is where God wants you to be. Let me say that God always works through a local church. He always expects you to work as a team, a ministry team. It's, and through that local church, that's, that's His ministry training, just like He did with His 12 disciples. It was like a team. God expects you to be a part of a local church. Maybe you're here this morning and you need to join Westside. Maybe you're here this morning and you're already a member of Westside. Maybe you're a member of another church. Are you active in the ministry? You know that you're saved. You know that you're going to heaven. You know all this stuff. You, you know that. But let me ask you this. I want you to think about this. Remember what we started off with. If you're saved, are you satisfied with your service when you meet your Savior? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you speak to each and every heart. And Lord, as we just spoke about a parable that you spoke here, the importance of doing good deeds and good works and doing it with the right motives after we're saved. Lord, I pray that you speak to each and every heart here. And Lord, whatever moves need to be made here this morning, may they be moved for the ongoing of your kingdom. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.